and he's ticklish. I don't know, church, if you realize what this really is, a special gift given to us of God, not just to this mother and dad and, and this sister, but to the, the whole church. Amen. The future lies right here in these babies. Amen. And what they learn, they tell me in the first five years of their life, is 90% of what they will ever know. Their being is developed from one to five years of age. We know that my preaching's loud sometimes, and sometimes I get excited. And children that was not raised in the house of God, sometimes it bothers them. But children that was set while they were in the womb in the house of God, and as they grow up, they can sleep right through my preaching. Doesn't bother them the least. Why? Because they're used to it. I, I never forget <laughs> one of Marvin's nephews, I guess it was, sitting on the front row of the little church, and I began to preach that morning. The Holy Ghost fell and got excited. And Stephen and him was sitting on the front row with that little church. And TJ, I, I believe his name was TJ, wasn't it? Stuck his fingers in his ear and looked at Stephen and said, what's he mad about? <laughs> Young and hadn't been brought up in church. He didn't know. So that's why it's so important as a church that we allow these children to be exposed to the preaching. The true word of God where the Holy Ghost conviction can set in and speak to their heart. Where the word of God can, and believe me, Benny said this a lot of times, you would be amazed at what these children retain from the preaching Amen. and what the congregation itself does because if these babies see it done in you, then they'll know if it's right or wrong for them to do. Amen. Amen. And you think about it, church, we're taking an awesome responsibility today as this mother and dad has brought this little boy before God and say, God, you gave him to us. Now we're going to give him back to you to be used for your glory. What we don't know is what God will do with that young man. Amen. May be the next greatest preacher in the world. Who knows? He may be in a, in a foreign mission field. Who knows? We don't know what his future holds, but we know who holds his future. Amen. We as a family are gathered here today to say we'll take our responsibility. And I want you to listen to this part carefully. If that child sees you in the house of God and then doesn't see you in the house of God, I've had many and many a child come to me and say, where is so-and-so? What happened to so-and-so? I don't see him no more. What happened? Amen. Now you think about that. That child is missing that face. So as you're agreeing today to help rear this child in the house of the Lord, what you're saying to God is, God help me to be faithful where this child can see me faithful Amen. and it'll be faithful. Amen. Uh, this hit and miss stuff don't work. Amen. We need to be, listen, grounded, Amen. rooted. Amen. Hey, <laughs> I don't want to say this, but I must. There's been a lot of times I want to throw my Bible down and stay at home. Because I know if I come and preach the message God gave me, I was going to get that look. And I didn't want to come and preach that message, but I had to. Amen? You say, well, preacher, why do you feel that? Well, Jesus felt that way in the Garden of Gethsemane, didn't he? Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, thy will be done. Sometimes we just have to cowboy up. That's what we're saying here today, church. You're taking on the responsibility to help this child understand and grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus and to understand how important it is. Listen, when we stand before God at the end of this thing, he's going to say, welcome thou good and what? Or depart, I never knew you. So our part is to be faithful. This child is going to look for somebody that will be faithful in helping him uh, to be raised as he should. Listen, on and off don't work. Amen. And telling one not to do what you're standing there doing don't work. 
Amen. I'll kill you if you ever smoke and you're standing there with a cigarette in your hand. I'm the one that said that to my own children. And later I got saved, I thought, well, that's the dumbest thing you ever done. Amen. Tell a child not to do what you're standing there doing. They're going to do what they see in us. Amen. If they see us faithful, they'll be faithful. If they see us praising the Lord, they'll learn to praise the Lord the way we do. If they see us reading our Bible, they'll read their Bible. Yeah. They'll want to know what what has interested you so much that you're reading, you're praying, you're faithful to church, and you're faithful in helping them have a guideline to grow by. Amen. Amen. You can't say, hey, don't do this, and then turn around and allow this one to do it. Amen. And that's the way we are a lot of times. As humans, we are apt and prone to pick and choose favorites. Pick and choose what commandments we want to use. Pick and choose what verse we like, what verse we don't like. But I'm asking you as a church this morning, Charity Mission, Free Will Baptist Church, do we take on the responsibility this morning to help this child grow up biblically? Biblically. That's a big statement right there. Now listen, don't get none of this new version. Let's raise him up King James Version. Amen. Amen. Hey, it worked for me. It worked for my grandpa, my great-grandpa. It's worked for 2,000 years. Why not just leave it alone? The King James Bible has been in effect over 400 years, and it's worked thus far. Leave it alone. But let's understand something. When you say, yes, I'm going to help rear this child. Now listen, men... You're saying I'm going to be a daddy to it. It can look at me. Now listen carefully. And I can say to that child, look at me and grow up in the Lord as I have. As I am, I hope you'll be. I know that Philip back there, myself and others have testified about their grandpas helping them. Being a great inspiration in their life. Brother Hired over there been a great inspiration to me many, many, many years now. And I, I think about this older generation that the world has thrown them away. Amen. What the wisdom that man has, I wish I'd have had it when I was 20. I wouldn't be near this ugly. Amen. Right? The world takes a toll on us. So let's, as men here today, say, I'm going to man up and let this child see in me Christ Jesus. Amen. Ladies, modesty. Modesty, ladies. I mean, the world now flaunts everything they got and some they don't have. And they want us to accept that as normal. I never forget what Brother Vernon Powell said one day about an old boy he caught looking at a porno book. He said, son, have you ever thought about that somebody's daughter you're looking at? That could be somebody's sister you're looking at. Would you want me to look at your mother and your sister and your wife in the way you're looking at that trash? He said, the old boy got mad and said, you better not look at my mama and you better not look at my sister. He said, well, why are you looking? Ladies' modesty. Seems outdated, old-fashioned. But if you read in the Bible, it's more precious than rubies. Amen. It's what the Word of God said, more precious than rubies. We got some wonderful mothers here. We got some wonderful grandmothers here. Amen. Great-grandmothers. Good examples. We got some young ladies in our church I'm so proud of. So ladies, I ask you this morning, do you take that responsibility to show this child modesty in the house of God? Modesty in your living. Hello? Amen. Not this new age movement where the women rule the house. I know that ain't popular, but it's in the Bible. Amen. Amen. Now you think about it, ladies, you're taking an awesome responsibility. This is my great grandchild. I want it to be able to look at you and say, I want a wife like that. I want a wife like that. 
that loves the Lord, loves her husband, loves her family, loves her church, loves her country. I want a wife like that. Amen. So ladies, I'm expecting you to live up to those standards where this child can see what a mother is, what a grandmother is, a great-grandmother. Read your Bible. First seen it in Eunice, and then Lois, your grandmother. God speaks highly of grandmothers and mothers. Amen. He had one, you know. He chose to come through Mary to come into this world. Amen. So he places a lot on the ladies. Do we agree to this this morning, church as a church as a whole, that we'll help rear this child in the admonition of the Lord? If so, say amen. amen. Everybody stand. And so standing, you're affirming that you, as an individual, want to be a living example to Isaac. Let me have the little feller. Lord, have mercy. I lose him in my hand. Look how tiny that is. Look how blessed it is. How precious this baby is a gift from God that is given to us and we come today to give it back to the Lord that he may use this child in his kingdom, his glory, and that this child will see Jesus in all of us here today. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Father, this is an important time for us, Lord, as we take on the responsibility, Lord, of showing this young man this gift of God, this precious seed, Lord, that you've allowed us to hold in our hands and have a part in its life. We take the responsibility as a church today as this mother and dad dedicates it to the Lord Jesus for his glory. Father, you bless it now. Lord, you let it prosper and be in good health. But Lord, let it ever worship and praise the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. God, may it ever be that its name will be recorded in the Lamb's book of life one day. And God, we'll all get together around that throne and worship and praise you. For Lord, we ask it in Jesus' name for thy glory. Amen. Amen. And the church said amen. Now, sissy. You know, you got a great responsibility of being big sister, don't you? Church, we are blessed.